welcome everyone to glow your own session one it's really good to have so many people in the room i'm in an arts venue at the moment and we'll have a look at some of the art activities that are going on um, during this glow your own session as one example of how small uh, interactive robots are being created and then used in arts and performance spaces like Ovalda today which is one of the arts venues in oxford so right i think it's time to introduce everybody so first of all i'm going to introduce uh, sarah so sarah is from science oxford and is going to be helping with some coding so sarah if you could just say a few words and get people to yeah. know you hi everybody excited to uh see you all here for glow your own so i'm going to be answering all your questions in the chat so if you've got any questions about anything that's going on post in there and i'm going to help you i work for a charity called science oxford so i do a lot of coding workshops crafting workshops that kind of thing uh all the time so it's but not that much online so it's very exciting to be here thanks sarah that's great um and then how about next up we have sophie so sophie is going to be leading on the coding and technical part of this so sophie say hello hi everybody um it is lovely to see you all um like Dan said i'm sophie and glow your own is one of my favorite parts of the festival uh, as well i'm really excited to see all of the creations um, that, that you will make over the next six weeks or so. I work um, just south of Oxford at the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory, which you can see behind me. Um, it's a background, I'm not actually floating in space. Um, <laughs> we do all kinds of amazing, um, uh, amazing experiments. Um, and we work a lot with coding um, and electronics and light which are all things that we're going to be um working on doing together over the next um the next few weeks so i'm really excited to to get this started great stuff and so along with sophie over at stfc in mal we have tristan so just if you could say hello and just introduce yourself please hello folks uh my name is tristan i also work at rutherford Appleton lab uh as a technician so i like to make stuff i like to code stuff and I like any project, even in my professional life, that has twinkly lights. So I'm, um, uh, yeah, lo really looking forward to this. I think this is going to be good fun. Fantastic. And then we have a, a new organisation with us this year. So uh, UK AEA, which stands for the United Kingdom Atomic Energy Authority, is another festival partner like STFC and RAL and Science Oxford. And so it's really nice to welcome four people from UK AEA today who are going to be just joining in and building things because they normally do this kind of stuff in their day job. Um, and I'm going to introduce, in a random order possibly, I'm going to introduce Jamie first of all to maybe just say hello, to say what you do and uh, just introduce yourself to the team. Yeah. Um, I, yeah I am Jamie. Um, I'm an electrical engineer here at the UKA. Um, and I've been working at Race for a bit. So that's all of our robotics department. We get to sort of build all these kind of fun, cool robots that kind of help us build uh, fusion. Um, so at the moment, I'm doing sort of circuitry, that kind of, and working with electricity. Uh, but yeah, it's, this it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun for this. So we have a couple of, there's a few events with race involved. Um, and you may have seen in the programme, we've got some robot dogs running around the Roger Bannister racetrack in a couple of days um, to explore how um, robots can be sporting heroes as well as uh, manage extreme environments so that's what race is all about so next on the line we've got james hodson so james if you could just say hi and introduce yourself and what you do yeah hi everyone so i also work at ukaea um i work in the technology department um and i <clears throat> am mainly based with using computers to simulate radioactive environments um so i use a lot of coding in my job but i don't actually get to build anything with it so I'm sort of learning that along with everyone else as well. So I'm excited to get into it. Great. So a new skill for everyone. Uh, next up, we've got Caitlin. So Caitlin, if you could say hi and, and tell us what you do. Oh, Caitlin, you're just on mute. If you could start again. Don't quite know what's happened there. In fact, we're going to introduce ja Jan. Uh, Caitlin, if you could do that thing again. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jan, how about you unmute yourself and tell us about what your work is? Yes, do you hear me all right? Yeah. All right. Uh, so, hi all, I'm Jan. I'm an engineer working for UK Atomic Energy Authority as my colleagues. 
Uh, we are based in Callum next to Abingdon and we are generally working on all the things around fusion reactors. If you heard about fusion, that's what we do. I work specifically on magnets, although I'm an engineer who is better suited with a hammer and screwdriver, so that whole experience will be also quite interesting for me. Fantastic. Thanks, Jan. And then maybe Caitlin is back, or the sound is at least working. So Caitlin, if you're there, if you want to say hi, that's great. If, if it's not quite working. Oh, yeah, okay, go for it. Ah, oh, amazing. Yeah, sometimes it just keeps ticking. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Kate. I'm a graduate software engineer. Um, so my job, um, we work with uh, the data access systems for JET, which is the, the main Taurus on site. Um, so lots of coding, lots of databases, but I've never touched an Arduino before, so I'm quite excited to get started with that. Fantastic. So this is the Glow Your Own team. A few more people may join us throughout the six weeks. Uh, it might be that not everyone is here for every every session, but this is the core Glow Your Own team. So you'll hopefully get used to our faces. <laughs> but I have slightly fewer sonic intrusions next time around to this uh, event later on. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to pass on to Sophie and mute myself so you don't get uh, disturbed by all of these strange noises. So Sophie, are you ready? I am indeed. And I don't think they're strange noises. I think they're exciting noises. Um, I'm looking forward to you, uh, to you showing us around a little bit later on. I think you said we might get a sneak, sneak peek later on, um, which would be great. Awesome. Well, like I said, it's so lovely to, um, uh, to see you all here. And I'm really excited about um, all of the amazing things that you can do um, that we're going to do together. So today, what we're going to do is we're not going to use uh, the physical, like the physical Arduinos um, today. So don't worry if yours hasn't arrived yet. Um, we're just going to uh, build and code our circuits online. So you should all have had an email uh, from Dane with a link to our Tinkercad class. And that's what we're going to use. Um, uh, we're going to use to do our coding and to do our uh, to, to make our twinkly lights. Um, Tristan really does make lots of twinkly lights um, in his real job. It's awesome. Uh, sometimes he lets me go and have a look at them. Um, so I have popped into the chat the link to the Tinkercad class. Um, so if you don't have the email to hand, you can just uh, click on that link straight away. Um, and then I'm going to share my screen in a minute and we can all join together, um, join into the class. It's going to grab my screen up. Uh, so in the email that Dane sent, you will have had a, um, a nickname. And that is the nickname that you need to put onto, um, onto Tinkercad. So once you click on that link, you should see something a bit like this, um, which is great. And then when you get to this point, you click join with nickname, and then you type your nickname in. So you will all have received your nickname um, via email. If you haven't, or if you've forgotten it, do pop something in the chat uh, and we can uh, find what your nickname is. Uh, They're all of the form GYO3 and then some more numbers. Um, but my nickname uh, is just my name because uh, that's easy for me to remember. Um, so you click, you write your nickname in there and then you click, that's me. And then you get to this exciting new point. So once you've got here, just raise your hand a bit. If you do have any problems, pop it in the chat. Um, Dane and uh, Sarah can help you with the nicknames. So when you've got to that point, either raise your hand or put an emoji in the, um, uh, in the chat or something just to let us know that you are all there. Brilliant, lots of you are there, which is awesome. Fab. I'll wait for a few more people. And while I do that, I'm going to change my virtual background. 
Hello. It seems the the nickname doesn't work. If you do have any problems, just pop it into uh, uh, pop the nickname that you were expecting into the chat, and we will check it out for you. Um, just so that we can make sure that that's one that's um, uh, that see from the back end if there are any problems. So. The reason that we all have uh, nicknames like this is because it means that we can all, um, all of our helpers can then have a look at your code directly um, and see uh, if you're having any problems, um, look at all the amazing stuff you're doing. So it will really help us all. And I can see that quite a few of you are logged in on my back, on the like um, behind the scenes part of it. I can see that you're, you're logging in a few seconds ago which is brilliant. If you do have any problems or if your nickname didn't work, pop it in the chat um, uh, and we will, uh, and Dane will help out with that. So while you're doing that, I will just give you another few minutes to give Dane a chance to, um, to get with all of the, all of the nicknames. Um, and I will say what is behind me. This is the Carina Nebula. Um, and it's a very beautiful um, picture of space. Um, you can see uh, if I take myself away, it's really, really gorgeous. Um, and it's very special to us at Rutherford Appleton Laboratory because it's one of the first um, images, the first science that was released from the James Webb Space Telescope, um, which we uh, helped to build. Uh, and was launched on Christmas Day. And that's one of the ways that we use light uh, and mirrors and things and coding to explore the universe. Awesome. All right, well, I think quite a few of you have um, uh, got in now. That's brilliant. Thank you uh, and well done, everybody. Um, if at any point we do uh, get a bit ahead of you or you have any um, questions, don't worry, because like Dan said, we are recording everything. So you will be able to uh, go back, record, uh, go back and watch the recording in a, in a day or so. And um, like pause me uh, if we're going too fast or if you want to listen to a bit again. Um, so you can always uh, go back and do that. So once you're here, we just click on this button, which is hidden by my Zoom screen, which is not very helpful click on this button here that says plus new um, at the top. And then you've got three options because Tinkercad, which is where we're doing it, does loads of different things. So you click plus new, and then you click this one here called circuit, because that's what we're going to be making. We're going to be making a beautiful circuit um, to make our twinkly lights. Uh, so you click on that, and then hopefully something should happen. Is there anything happening? Here we go. Tinkercad was just being a little bit slow today. And you end up with something that looks like this. Okay, lots of different options uh, and things that we can do and we'll go over it all um, uh, together. So don't worry if you don't understand what everything means uh, at the moment. Um, so the first thing um, that I always do when I create a new circuit is I give it a name. Um, so up here in the top left hand corner, so you'll often see me when I'm doing this look down at my hands, it's because I don't know my left from my right very well, and I have to do this to figure out which which side of the screen is left and which side is right. Um, so if, if you ever see me looking down that's what I'm doing. Um, so you can change the name of it to something that means you remember uh, what it is so let's just call I'm going to call this one glow your own session number one. You can call it whatever you like, but in coding, it's always a good idea to name something that you will re easily remember. Um, uh, because if you come back in a week or a month or a day, uh, then it can be really hard to remember what you were doing in each part. Um, just keeping an eye on the chat, I can see that um, some of you haven't got your... Um, uh, nicknames, I know that Dane will be um, adding those in and sending you uh, private messages for to tell to tell you what your nickname um, what your nickname is. Okay. Um, so 
don't worry if you're not quite there yet. Right, so um, on this is where we're going to make our twinkly lights flow. Um, help us, do you all, are you all at this point, are you about to start making circuits with all of us? Fantastic. Um, right, so we are going to use something called an Arduino. Has anybody heard of uh, Arduinos before? If you have, pop something in the chat, uh, raise your hand. Just um, it's yeah, some of you definitely have. Brilliant. Oh, I love the penguin, Tristan. That's awesome. Um, brilliant. So does anybody know what an Arduino is? Can anyone describe it uh, for everybody else? Um, you can pop something in the chat or, um, oh, someone put a chocolate bar in the chat. Now I'm hungry. A microcontroller board or a computer. Yes, exactly. Um, so an Arduino is what we call a microcontroller. And we can uh, get one on Tinkercad by looking over here on the right hand side um, at all of these different components, all of the different things that we can use in our uh, in our creations and finding the one that says Arduino. And when you click on that, you pull it over um, and it arrives, it appears on this kind of working area over here. And so what an Arduino is, is actually really simple. It's a microcontroller. And if you think about it, micro, that means that's the small part. It's a small thing. And controller is, means it controls things. So it's a small thing that controls other things. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect it up to lights and sensors and motors, all kinds of fun things. Uh, and we are going to control them by giving a set of instructions or coding our um, to tell them what to do. So today, um, in the next uh, half hour or so, what we're going to do is we're going to um, connect it up to a light and we're going to get that light to turn on. Um, has everybody got the Arduino um, over here? Has everybody got this um, ready? If you have, pop something in the chat, um, raise your hand, uh, let us know if you've got the Arduino. Fantastic. Lots of you raising your hands, brilliant. Looks good. I can see you all raising your hands. Oof. And thumbs up, brill. All right. So a cool thing with Tinkercad is you can actually zoom in and out uh, on it. So uh, if you have a mouse with a scrolling uh, a scrolling wheel in the middle, I'm just clicking my scrolling wheel in. You can zoom right in to see all of the little bits um, and pieces. So you'll see on this side, we've got these uh, thing, uh, these little holes, which we call pins. And we're going to connect our lights and stuff to, um, uh, to these pins. Uh, and on this side, we've got digital uh, and on this side we've got some other pins as well uh, and they'll all do different things which we'll talk about as um, uh, as we go on so we'll learn about new ones each time so the next thing we want is something called a breadboard now <coughs> uh, a breadboard is uh, this thing uh, over here which is next to the Arduino and it's a really useful thing if you are doing anything to do with electronics. So I'm just gonna pull my breadboard over here uh, like that. I'm sure if any of you um, have, uh, have done lots of electronics, you will have used breadboards uh, in the past. Um, so what the breadboard does uh, is it has lots of little connections inside so it has these little holes called pins. They're all made, labeled and numbered. Uh, but inside the breadboard, um, all of the pins in this row are all connected to each other. So if you hover over one, you'll see that it's circled with little green, little green circles, and that shows you that they're all connected. 
And that means that you don't have to worry about like soldering um, bits of wire together or wrapping them around with electrical tape too much because you can just pop them in the breadboard and then they're all nice and connected and you can move them around as well. So if you put it in the wrong place, it doesn't matter because you can just move it um, easily to the next place. So we're going to use, um, uh, we're going to connect all of our different components. Up. So I'm zooming back out so you can see everything um, again. All right. Do we have, uh, does everybody have um, uh, a, an Arduino and a breadboard? Yep, fantastic. Hands up. Oh, you're doing so well, everybody. Yes, great. Looks good. All right, so I said that our goal for today was to get a light to turn on, um, which is going to be awesome. Oh, now someone's put a pizza in the in the chat. Honestly, you have to stop putting food, otherwise you're going to start hearing my stomach crumbling soon. Um, but I put some sort of weird green line and a weird charging thing that came out the moment I tried to get out my art Arduino thing. That's because you've you've gone on a step. Um, don't worry about it. Um, I'll I'll show you what that is in just a second. Okay. So, um, what uh, we can do next is we need to connect all of the, uh, connect our, our Arduino to our breadboard uh, because, um, so that it can communicate to it. And that's what you've done already. So we're gonna use wires to do that. And it's really, really easy to connect, create a wire in Tinkercad. All you need to do is click on a place, the place you want to start. So we're gonna start um, to click we're going to start our wire on this on one of these uh, holes here in our breadboard. So, so yeah, can you see this uh, wire here now? Oh, I put some sort of weird randomly placed one. So if you put it in the wrong place, that's absolutely fine because I do that all the time. Um, so all you need to do to delete a wire is just click on it. Um, and when you've clicked on it, you'll know because it gets a bit thicker and you get these little circles and then either press delete or press the, um, the rubbish bin up in the top left corner. OK, so if I wanted to delete it, I could just press delete like this and it would disappear. OK, so if you put it in the wrong place, that's fine. Delete it. Start again. So I'm going to recreate it. I'm going to go from this minus line all the way to the pin that says GND or is labeled ground. And I'm just gonna make it straight because I like my wires to be straight. Um, okay, so has everybody got a wire there? Um, just pop your hand up, pop something in the chat if you have. If you're not there, uh, don't worry uh, at all because like I said, we've got the recording. Um, and you'll be able to look at that. Um, <laughs> uh, you'll be able to look at that uh, later and pause me when you need to. It doesn't matter um, if you've got it ex in exactly the same place. The thing that does matter is it needs to go to this pin here that says ground GND. Um, and it needs to go to this line here that says minus, but it doesn't matter. I could have moved it to this pin instead, for example, as long as the connections are the same. I just see, look, I've just created a new wire. I told you I'd do that all the time. So I've created it and I'm just gonna delete it. And you can move the wire by clicking on the circles. Great. Oh, I'm also really enjoying all of the um, all of the emojis there. Right. So some of you who have done some circuits uh, uh, at school or in the past, you might have heard people use the phrase complete circuits. OK, and a complete circuit means it has to go all the way 
uh, around in a complete connection. You can think of it like a racing car circuit. Okay, so if um, you've got a big racing car and if the road is clear the whole way around, then the racing cars can go round and round and round and everything, everybody's happy. But if there is a break, if the road stops at any point, then all the cars will crash uh, and they won't get to um, uh, win the race. So we need to make a complete circuit. So bear that in mind as we add our other components, because that's a really good way of checking whether or not our circuit is going to work. So next, we're going to add our uh, light, OK? And a light is called an LED or a light emitting diode. Um, so if you look over to the right on the components, scroll right up to the top and you can see this LED. All right, and that means a light emitting diode, it's just a light. So you can, again, just like with the breadboard, you can pull it over and then pop it wherever you like. Okay, now I uh, like red. Red is one of my favorite colors. So I'm gonna leave my LED as a red light. But if you want to change the color of your light, you can just click on it uh, and change any of the colors here. So it could be a blue light, for example. Um, but I like red, so I'm going to stick with a red light. You can also give it a name if you want to. Um, so we call it red light one, red light one. Um, and sometimes that can help. But you can see that this is not uh, connected all the way along. So we've got our Arduino and that connects to the breadboard to all of these lines, but then these lines don't connect to our Arduino, do they? So these lines are all connected with the green spots, but they're not connected to the light. So we need to make a connection between this line and our LED, all right? And we're gonna use something called a resistor to do that. Has anyone um, used resistors before? Pop your hand up if you have, or pop something in the chat to, about where you've used them. They can be really useful. Ah, fantastic, some of you have. That's great. Brilliant in school projects. Fabulous. Remember if you are, um, uh, remember that this is recorded so that you can always tweak things if you want. Just like with the light, uh, sorry, just like with the wire, if you do want to delete your light, your LED, you can just press the rubbish bin button once you've clicked on it. So it's always easy to delete it. And you can also undo. That's always a very useful thing. So if I moved it over here and I was like, oh no, that's not where I wanted it to be. You can just click undo and it will move it back to where you are. So we're going to use a resistor to connect this wire up to this light. So we're going to pull this resistor, which um, decreases our current, and we're going to put it over here. Now, remember we talked about that complete circuit, so we need to make sure there's a clear path. So where I've put this resistor, you can trace it along. So it goes from our Arduino along the wire and then along this, this um, in the breadboard to the resistor up to this line, and then that's connected to the LED, all right? So you can control how powerful your resistor is by clicking on it and then just changing this um, number. So if you want it to be strong, you can make it this a big number. If you want it to be not as strong, um, you can change it to be a small number. So we're actually gonna make it not as strong. So we're gonna change this to uh, ohms, so it comes up as kilo ohms. That's just a measure of how strong the resistor is, how much it it reduces the current for you. And we're going to say that's about a hundred ohms. Oh, sorry. You can change that to there. But is this a complete circuit? Is it going? Would it work if I gave it any power? <coughs> nope. Fantastic. No, this wouldn't work because if we trace it around, it goes from the Arduino along the wire, up the resistor, to the light, through the light, and then it's got nowhere to go. 
So we need to do a final wire that goes from our light all the way back to our Arduino. So we're going to do that from here. I'm going to draw my uh, line down like this, and I'm going to make it go to one of the pins here. So I'm going to make it go to pin seven. See, all of the pins are numbered. Um, so I'm going to make it go to pin seven. If you would like to change the color of your wire, you can do that just by clicking on it and then changing the color here. Okay, so whatever color you want, you can change it. Remember, if you are having any problems, you can write something in the chat. Um, and Sarah and Tristan and Jan, they're all here to help you. Okay. <coughs> all right, how's everybody doing? Have we got this circuit that we can go all the way along this wire through the LED, through the resistor, and then back to ground? If you have got all of that circuit done, just pop your hand up um, or put an emoji in the chat. Brilliant. Oof. Is that a helicopter emoji? Honestly, I'm really old and so I can do smiling emojis and that's about it. And even that sometimes it's a bit, it's a bit too complicated for me. All right, fantastic everybody. You're doing really well. Um, and remember this is all recorded. So if you want to pause, if we're going a bit too fast for you, you can pause and then um, uh, make sure you're up to the right point and then carry on. All right, so now we have our circuit. The last thing we need to do is code it. We need to give it some instructions to tell it what we want to do, okay? So you can uh, write those instructions by looking up here in the top right-hand corner to this button that says code. OK, you can click the code and then all of this kind of fun stuff comes out. All right. And this is where we're going to write the instructions for our circuit. So we're going to write a set of instructions or a bit of code that is going to control what the LED is doing. OK, so it comes with some uh, it all it automatically gives you some suggestions of what kind of code you want, but we don't want to do that code. So we're going to um, delete this. So you can either do that by clicking on it and pulling it to this rubbish bin in the corner like that. Makes a nice kind of whoosh noise. Or you can pull it over to the left hand side and it will disappear as well. OK, but it's normally easier to pop, pop it over into this uh, rubbish bin because then you know for sure it's been deleted. Now, the, the instruction that we want to send is turn our LED on, okay? Uh, and our LED, my LED, is connected to pin number seven. So you can see here they're all numbered with different pin numbers, okay? So in these blocks, this is instructions that we can use. So what we want to do is we want to set pin seven so this one, number seven, to high. So that's going to turn it on, all right? So if you click on output, you'll see all of the uh, blue instructions. Then you then pick the instruction you want, set pin zero uh, to high. And we can change which pin we want to send an instruction to by clicking on this little arrow, and then picking the right number. So mine is connected to pin seven. You might have connected it to a different number, that's okay. Um, and that's the instruction that we want to do. Um, everybody pop something uh, in the chat uh, if you've got your instruction uh, set pin to high, that means on, um, or raise your hand. Lots of fab emojis. Honestly, I think we should set us like a secret challenge of a different emoji every time. Um, that sounds great. 
Brill. So more of you doing that, that is fantastic. All right, I'll just give you all a little bit more time um, uh, to, to do that and to get that instruction there. Uh, and if you have, you can just look at the beautiful picture behind me because I think it's one of the most beautiful pictures in the whole world. Well, I suppose not in the world, actually, uh, in space. Uh, it's a very beautiful picture. That's what I mean. Fab, you are all doing really well. Um, this is all brand new stuff to you, so it's fantastic uh, that you've got um, uh, that you've got this far so quickly. All right, <laughs> we're going to add one more command, which uh, is going to tell our little Arduino, our little controller that we want it to do this forever, okay? We always want our light to be on. It's always, always, always gonna be on. And that, um, for that, we need a different type of command, a different type of instruction that we can find in the control block over here. So you can see um, this one um, where my mouse is. If you click on the one that says control, you get a whole bunch of different commands. Um, so you can do all kinds of different things here. And since we want um, our light always to be on, our LED to be on forever and ever, we are going to use a forever loop. Um, and they're really, really useful in coding. If you've done Scratch, you might well have done forever loops before um, uh, and used them lots and lots. Um, so just like before, we're going to click on it, drag it over, um, and we're going to pop it so that it goes around our set pin seven to high. So what this does is everything inside this loop, it's going to keep sending that command to our Arduino. So that's always going to be the instruction to the Arduino. Carry on being high, carry on being on. Right. OK, so we are nearly ready to test it out. Um, which is very exciting. Let's see if, uh, has everybody got, um, got this code and this circuit? Don't worry if you haven't, like I said, you can definitely um, uh, uh, watch the recording and catch up later. All of the instructions are also in the, um, the kind of booklet that Dane sent you an electronic copy of um, earlier this week. So they're all there as well, all written out for you. So you can always do that. Okay. All right. And now we're gonna do, um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if it works. Okay. Um, so one of the reasons that we use Tinkercad is because it's really good at testing and testing is something that is incredible incredibly important um, for us, especially when we're doing things like sending a telescope up into space. We want to test it here on Earth. So that if it is, if it is broken, we want to fix it on Earth, not when it's in space, because that's much harder. Um, and so the more testing we can do, the more the happier we are. And Tinkercad will let us test whether or not this is right. So next to the code button, you can see this other button that says start simulation. Um, and so what that does is it's going to um, pretend that it's a real Arduino. It's going to send the instructions that we've written to the Arduino, uh, and it is going to uh, do whatever a real Arduino would do, which hopefully is turn my um, is turn my LED on. But let's see. All right, shall we all do it together? So I'm going to count down from three, uh, and uh, three, two, one, go. And on go, we'll all press start simulation and see if our light goes on. Uh, if it does go on, raise your hand, um, have a little celebration party, okay? So in three, two, one, go. Hooray, mine worked. 
Um, thank you. Thank you for the party, everybody. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see, it takes a minute to think about it. Hooray. Oh, That's fantastic. We've got stars. Great. Um, so you can see that when I pressed start simulation, my LED turned on and it got brighter. So if I stop, it turns off. And then if I start it again, it will turn on. So this is fantastic. This is really, really good. And when next week, when we start using the real Arduinos, um, this is really useful because if it works on the computer, but it's not working in on your like real LEDs, then you know that there must be something wrong with your circuit. If yours didn't work, that's absolutely fine. Mine often doesn't work the first time. In fact, mostly mine doesn't work. If I tell you a secret, I think mine worked because I practiced just before you all joined and made sure that I knew where it was going. And now Dane's laughing at me for practicing. It's a sensible thing to do, Dane. There is nothing wrong with being prepared. So I've got a couple of things prepared to show. Excellent. Uh, if now is a good time for that. I reckon it's, um, it's about 12 or 15 minutes left of the session. I know some people have had a couple of extra difficulties. So what we'll do later is we'll turn off the video recording and then we'll just do some one-to-one -one troubleshooting uh, to help out. Uh, but it's so good to see that so many of you got your LED um, working for the first time. There were some great emojis in there. I did see them. Um, but I've got, so is, is now a good time to have a little tour and see some stuff? Is anyone, I, would, would anyone... I would be very excited to see some stuff. Okay. Um, so first of all, I've got a really terrible example um, from last year. So we... Uh, we made some uh, designs last year on Tinkercad, and I made it into a lovely cardboard box. Which I'm going to take this off and turn the camera around. Um, oops, it will let me do it. So there was this box, and it had a light that went round and round and round on this little cardboard um, cutout. But all the lights have got jumbled up, and now it just looks like this. <laughs> that is a so, bit messy, you know, Dane. It's a little bit messy. I've not got my wires all straight, so you know, I'm sorry. But what I can show you, so someone who does have their wires all straight, is a guy who works with Neon uh, Dan. So I'll turn the camera this way. Uh, we introduce uh, Star. So hi. Uh, so Star has been working with some uh, some University of uh, Bristol researchers and University of the West of England researchers and some dancers and we're just in Ovada um, arts venue so it's going to go through here and we're preparing for a show later on tonight um, called Prehension Bloom so we've got people preparing the ground really carefully you can see the summer lights um, and you can see possibly in these troughs you've got something what is this? So we've got a little robot that has been made. So I'm just going to ask. What cover up the camera? <laughs> so, uh, so how do these robots work? Can you tell us about that? There's a radio transmitter up in the top there. Controls wirelessly from inside two servos. Push and pull some mm -hmm. fishing wire essentially okay so, which moves the arms so these are the arms these sort of tentacles they almost look like a spine don't they that sort of they're the arms yeah. and skeletons yeah. and so you were just looking at monitoring something is that right is yeah that i was just checking the voltage of the battery i just got another show to so you want to make sure in. you want to make sure it's working um, so you've got like <laughs> so this tests the voltage across the battery, does it, or is it across, yeah, across the... the battery? Give it a minus sign. Twelve point zero four, which is perfect. So we've got twelve point zero four volts on the battery for this beast, which is going to work. And there's a second one. You can see just over in here. So, but this this is the kind of thing. There's a whole bunch. There's a whole big team here at Ovada setting up the performance space. So we've got two robots. We've got a whole bunch of tech. <laughs> but I'm going to leave these guys to it. 
But that's just one example that you can um, you can make a robot out of Arduino using uh, servo motors and uh, little uh, sort of pull kind of wheels and put sensors on it. Uh, so hopefully, if you're really good at coding uh, after where you own, it might be that we kind of expand to do something even more elaborate and extravagant with our coding, and you don't just have a box of flashing lights like I've got here. <laughs> Oh dear, what a sorry state. It is very beautiful. It's just not very tidy. It's not very tidy. I think, Sophie, we get on really well because you like it tidy and I really don't mind if it's messy. Yes. So I do like things tidy. You might have noticed that I make all of my wires straight. You don't have to make your wires straight. Um, uh, and, and in fact, Dane sometimes laughs at me for making my wires shape, um, straight. I'm just going to share my screen again so you can see it. Uh, all. Um, but uh, one thing that uh, having straight wires helps with is it makes it easier to spot if there are any um, things that aren't connecting quite, quite right. If all of your wires are all crisscrossing um, and stuff, then it's harder to trace where they are going. Um, and so having them nice and straight um, makes that easier sometimes. But I just like things to be neat and tidy as well that's my that's the real reason also had a really fantastic um an important question uh in the chat which is how to save this i should have mentioned that before because with coding saving your work is the most important thing i am sure that every single one of the helpers um has lost code at some point because they have not saved their work um and if they say they haven't then uh, I think they're probably fibbing. I've certainly done it lots of time. Thankfully, Tinkercad is really awesome and Tinkercad saves everything for you. Um, so um, it goes up um, because we named it Glow Your Own Session 1. Next time you come on uh, to Tinkercad, you'll be, you will see that and you will be able to click on it. So I'll just show you what that will look like. So if I um, go back to the home, which you do by clicking this little button, uh, Tinkercad dashboard uh, in the top left. You'll see that it tells you all of your designs. So it will show you the one that we have just done, which is just like this. And if you want to duplicate it, to make a copy of it, which is always a sensible idea. If you've got something that's working and then you're like, oh, that's working. I'm going to do an extra thing now. And then we've got five more minutes. Do you think we can do a, a tiny extra thing? I think we probably could. How about we Excellent. do that? Just one little extra. Let's see, because they were all so brilliant. Let's try. So do we it. know that's working, and we don't want to we don't want to lose the the bit that's working. So we're going to copy it or duplicate it, like this. And just click duplicate, and now I've got a copy of it. So I've saved I've saved my um, original one that we know is working, but I've got a copy that I can make different make changes so if i do make some changes but it destroys everything i can be like oh, okay i'll just delete that and go back to the code that's working so you saw that dane had twinkly lights i know tristan likes lights that flash um so we can definitely code that in our circuit so if you click back onto code here um and then in control you might have noticed earlier that there is this um instruction that says wait to wait for one second. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to turn on, then we're going to tell it to wait, then we're going to tell it to turn off, then wait again, and then we'll see what happens. So we're going to wait, turn on, wait. I'm going to make it a bit faster, so 0 0.5 seconds, but you can make it whatever you want. Uh, so it's going to turn on, and then it's going to wait for half a second. Then I want to turn off. So to turn it off, we use the same command that we used to turn it on, uh, which is an output, and we're going to set it like this. So it's still pin seven, so I need to change that to pin seven. But instead of turning it on or making it high, I want to make it low, like that. So set it on, wait, set it off, and then we're going to make it wait again. So that it's off for a little bit. We pop that in there and let's make it 0.5 again. 
So see if you've done that. Uh, and when you have, uh, raise your hand and then we will um, all test it together, see if it's working. Fantastic. All right, so we're going to start our simulation again um, to see if we have coded this properly. So in three, two, one, start. That turns on and off and on and off and on. I should have made it more slow because I can't say on and off uh, quickly enough, um, should I? So you can see now it's doing that beautiful twinkling thing that we all, that Dane's circuit was doing that he showed us earlier. Um, and that we all love. So over the be making uh, real circuits, but just using the same kind of things that we've done uh, today, we'll be adding in fun stuff like more, um, more LEDs, different colors, uh, so that we can make beautiful patterns. Um, we, can, we can look at motors so we can get them to move around and um, sensors as well, so we can get them to turn on automatically when it gets dark, which I always really like um, because I'm lazy and often I don't want to get up off the sofa to turn, to turn the light on. So did everybody, did, has anybody got a flashing light? Pop your hand up or pop something in the chat if you have, fantastic. Oh, you, are doing really well, everybody. If you didn't quite get that bit because we're really close to the end, so I went through it quite quickly. Um, remember, Dane is recording this. He'll share it with all of you so that you can um, uh, you can pause, make sure you've got to the right point um, before checking again. And um, we can always help with troubleshooting later on as well. So I think that's everything from me. Um, over to you, Dane. That's well great. Done, everybody. Thank Sorry. Yeah. That is really good to see. Everyone's done a really good job. There's lots of twinkling, very rapidly flashing lights. So that's excellent. We're going to stay behind for an extra 30 minutes now or thereabouts for anybody who needs an extra little bit of help. We will be getting the recording up on YouTube and then embedded into the Glow Your Own Session 1 website and we'll tell you when that's been done uh, so you can come back and check it. There's also the worksheet that should be on that website and you should have also e received that in an email. So if you uh, just missed a couple of bits maybe it might well be that you can follow along with printed or the PDF worksheet um, but if you if you want to have a look at the video we'll get that up straight away and you can see that brief uh, special cameo performance by Neon uh, Neon Dance. Um, so fantastic. I'm really happy that everyone's joined in and got that working. Um, thanks, Sarah, for all the chat help. And Caitlin, Jan, Tristan, Jamie, everyone, James, for just helping out. Um, we'll be seeing these guys more over the next few weeks. Uh, and so I think it's probably time to wrap up the one hour workshop session. So we'll just close this uh, recording, but we'll stay behind for an extra 30 minutes. So I'm just gonna say to everyone, thanks so much for coming and for the recording, goodbye. <laughs> and we'll see you, um, see you next week. Um, so the recording is now stopped.